Yo, yo, welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about the return statement, which is used inside a function. Before we start this video, I just wanted to let you guys know that I started a Discord server, so that way we can build a community where we could help each other out and ask questions. The link will be in the description, so make sure to check that out, and I'll see you there. Also, I was this close to quitting the series because I received a comment on a video where this person stated that I don't have a bachelor's in computer science nor a bachelor's in education and that this series is not helpful at all. So for a fact, I do have a bachelor's in computer science. I'm teaching this series because I want to break concepts down into a very simple manner that anyone can understand. But for those of you who want to learn from an actual teacher, feel free to check out CS50 by Harvard where you can learn a whole computer science introductory course for free. I'll leave a link in the description below. In addition, I also had a huge debate with this person on Facebook. I have the receipts here, so feel free to read it if you want. And the person claims that I am misleading you guys and doing a disservice to actual professors. Uh, this person is planning to dislike all my videos and potentially take them down. So if you are actually learning and enjoy this series, please do leave a like and a comment. It really means a lot to me and it helps me determine whether I should continue this series or not. Anyways, sorry for the long rant, let's get to the lesson. Cool, so last class we talked about functions and how we can pass parameters into it. So these parameters can be thought as an input and basically the function takes these inputs and does something to it and then it can return a value back or aka an output. So if you look in the drawing board here, if you've played Minecraft before, which is basically a popular game where you can craft items. For example, if you have two sticks and you place it here, and if you have three stones and you place them here, you basically get an output of a pickaxe uh, because this kind of looks like a pickaxe. Basically, the point I'm trying to drive home here is that a function takes input and then it can have an output. Cool, now let's jump into our editor. So let's create a function. So we have to do df define and let's just call it example and let's make it take one input, aka a parameter and let's call it x. And then now on the next line, all we want to do is use the return statement. So we just type return and then space, and then now let's return x. So basically all this function does is it takes an input and just returns that same input back. So in order to use this function, we have to call it. So let's do example and let's give it 10. And now let's run the code. So nothing shows up in our console. In order to get something to show up, we have to use the print statement. So let's do print example and close the parenthesis. And now let's click run. And now we will see 10 here. So basically what's happening here is we call our function example and then we pass it the value 10 for x and all it does is it returns the value x back which in this case is 10. And basically what's happening in the code is that this example 10 gets evaluated first and then the value 10 gets returned. So essentially what's happening is we're just printing 10 because our function returned the value 10. Cool, so this function doesn't really do anything exciting. So now let's create another function and let's call it double. Define double and it takes in one parameter x and all we want to do is multiply the x value by two. So now we can just do return x multiplied by two. So now let's test it. So we can do print double and let's pass it a 10. And let's run our code. And as you can see, we got 20 here. Uh, so the cool thing now is now we can double any number we want. So now let's switch it up and put 99. And if we run this code, we're going to get 198, which is 99 times 2. So one thing to know is that when you use the return statement, it automatically exits your function. Let me show you what I mean by that. So let's add a new line here and type print and hello. So let's run this code and see what happens. So if we run the code, we're only going to see 198. We're not going to see the print hello. The reason for this is because the program reads from top to bottom. So the first line it will see is this return. And when it sees the return, it will exit the function right away. So on line eight, print hello will be skipped. So if we want our function to print hello, what we have to do is put it before the return statement. So let's move this up to line seven. And now let's hit run. And cool, now you see hello and then 198. And that's basically how the return statement is used in programming. Cool, so before we end the lesson, I want to quickly go through how a program executes the code. Like I mentioned before, a program reads from top to bottom. So basically, we always start from line one and we go all the way down to the end of the program, in this case, line nine. Without running the code, can you guess what the output would be? Feel free to pause the video and think about it for a second. Cool, so let's start at line one. So first, we create this variable called name. 
And if you remember from the previous lesson, we basically just said that we'll create a box and we'll store the value of the variable inside it. And we'll label the box by the name of the variable. So I'm not going to draw any boxes, but I'll just write it out on the side. So first we have name, and then this will equal Vincent. Sorry for my messy writing, but that's our first variable. And then next on line two, we say print, and then it says, hello world, my name is. And then when we see this format, what it does is search for a variable called name, in this case, Vincent, and this value will get inserted into this placeholder. Cool. So next on line three, nothing happens there. And then line four, we declare a function called f of x. So basically this will get written down on the side. So we have f of x. And then on line five, this belongs to f of x, so we can just ignore it for now. So now we go to line six, which has nothing, and then line seven, it's going to print. I will call function f of x with five. And then on line eight, it will do print f of five. So now the function will look for the function f of x, which is here. And this is on line four. One thing to note is that when we call a function, the program will look for the line where the function is declared. So in this case, for function f of x, it's on line four. Next, the program will execute the lines of code within that function. So in this case, there's only one line, line five, and then the program will execute line five next. And then after it finishes executing that line, it will return back to line eight and finish off the print. So basically what happens now is this value five will get inserted in for X. And then we'll go to line five to actually execute the function. So now we just do return five times x and we grab the x from the parameter which is 5 and then we subtract 3 and finally the result of this is 5 times 5 which is 25 minus 3 which equals 22 so now basically our print will just become print 22 so just remember the function will get evaluated first and then we get the value it returns and then after it will print that value and then finally on line nine, we just print done. And that's basically how a program runs. So feel free to try this exercise again on your own and just make sure that you understand what's happening here. Feel free to drop a comment if this didn't make sense. Thanks for watching. That's basically the end of this lesson. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content.